What is going on, everyone? We are back for season two of, or how's it season three? It's not technically season three. But anyways, season two, Moon Geist Power Rankings, that's right, is coming back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back for another season, and we got stripped away of best gift. We blame some of the coaches, but some of them are explainable. Some of you, you have no excuse. You have no excuse. You know who you are. But anyways, the person you obviously hear in here is the same guy who was with us last time. It is my main man, King of the Alfredo Sauce himself, Drew. Yes. Hello, what is poppin' people? I am here, helping you with the PRs. So we're in a good time! We're gonna be doing much differently than we did last time. So yeah. basically, we're gonna be going through each team here, and... We both have different rankings. Yes. So we're going to go through here, be like, hey, this is what rank we put, and just kind of go through what we think of it. So, yeah. Last season, we had Haunch, who smells. Uh, he was able to yeah. personally rank these out with everyone last season. But due to the fact that this man is become busy, and frankly, he just wants to sleep in a couch and a bed all his life, he just wanted someone else to do it, so me and Drew literally sat on a call last night for a long time, figuring out these teams, pointing out any flaws we saw, and then go over them, point the strengths and weaknesses, and personally rank them on our own stand, and then I took all the rankings and compiled the list. Now, some of them are going to be a little weird because some were tiebreakers, so I had to compare the teams personally on how someone kind of liked it more and all that stuff, so... That'll be our own personal ranking for that stuff on based on tiebreakers. But I will say there is a lot of differences between our lists. Quite a bit, a little bit. But there's not too much differences in some in some spots. But you guys are in for a treat. You guys are excited. At least hit the like button down below for us and show your support for the moon guys, which in our heart is still the best division. We got second best this time. That has to count for something. Yeah. I mean, name another draft where it goes less than 24 hours. We tried our best, but like... The people that sabotage us know who you are. We'll come for you. Well, we, we came in clutch at the end. That's all that matters. We pulled in second. Also, no one sniped Drew Smeargle. That's also very sad. That, that, that's true. No Smeargle sniped this time. Anyways, guys, so what we're going to do, like Drew said, we're going to literally start with Pulsey's team and move our way self down, but we're going to talk about the rankings of each team. Each have our own time to talk about what we like and dislike and overall why we rank the team. So, Drew, if you are ready, are you ready to rock this out? Freddy, Freddy. You're Freddy. Uh, I, I, People, I if you didn't Freddy. know, if you look at this man, he looks like Shea Quaza, and he also looks like Fred from Gooby-Doo. I have also been told I kind of look like Shaggy, so... Yeah, I don't see it. Uh, anyway, so, with that being said, we're going to kick it off here with our first team, one of the new coaches we have this season, in Pulsey the Dulce, and Drew has him ranked as number 12. I personally have him ranked as number 15. So, Drew, if you would like, tell us why you think he's at least a decent enough team up. I'm not the biggest fan of the team. Think I can see the synergy with Mega Metagross and like Arceus Fairy. I I there's still some synergy with like Bulari Moltres and Mega Metagross. Like defensively speaking, it kind of does nice. It takes away some of the like weaknesses, but like. Other than that, it just kind of feels weird. Like, I don't really see why the Lunala is there, personally. Like, it just feels like it doesn't fit with the Mega Metagross and the Arceus Fairy. feels like you could have got an Uber that fits better, personally, but... Because that's one of my biggest gripes. Also, if the, the hazards on this team are kind of bad. Like, 
the only real center you're going to be bringing probably every week is Tentacruel. You're not going to be bringing Rocks on Mega Metagross because you want to click buttons with that team. And your only other hazard option is a cutie slide. And that is a cutie slide. So, we're not counting that. <laughs> and I think that that is, like, very bad hazard in general. Like, you can do stuff possibly with, like, removal, but that's only really, like, with Tentacruel, Scizor, and Savali. Like, don't get me wrong, those can be decent, like, removal options, but, like, other than that, there's nothing else to help, like, remove, you know? Yeah, so the way I ranked Pulse's team is, you look, he's got Zygarde 50, he honestly should have just upgraded and got 100% for him. That would have fit his three oozes perfectly. Yeah, I, I agree. Definitely could have upgraded that guy. But, yeah, but... There are some pieces to his team that's really nice. I honestly think Mega Metagross is super underrated. I don't think a lot of people give that thing a lot of love for just the fact that it's Tough Claws boosted with, I think, like a base 150 attack stat. That thing is a slam trunk right there. Arceus Fairy, probably one of the top three, if not top five, best Arceus forms to draft in the draft league setting. Lunala is a very good Uber in itself. Like Drew did mention, I really think the hazard setting is very terrible on this draft. You have one rocker, one rocker only in Mega Metagross, which never really wants to run rocks unless you are going to force that thing to be defensive, which I think you're doing a terrible job then if you're making a defensive Mega Metagross every single week. Tentacruel is also one of those mons that I, I like seeing run with Assault Vest because of the fact it's a good special wall for a lot of teams or Black Sludge. But also I feel like you're forcing Toxic Spikes almost every single week. You're forcing Rapid Spin every single week. And then you're just running dual stab, and that's it on this thing. Scizor is another one of those Pokemon that wants to kind of click a button when Choice Banded hits. But if it's forced into being a defogger for the team, it kind of lacks luster. Same thing with Savali. Savali has a lot of unique t tricks and ticks to it that really makes it such a very utilized Pokemon. One of the most best utilized Pokemon in the run. Basically, it's Mini Arceus in some ways. So, actually, I just realized that he has basically Mini Arceus with an Arceus. I didn't even realize that until just now. Oh, I just realized that too. But anyways, back to the point at hand. But the thing is, I don't want to see Savali result to a defogger every single week when there is chances to run offensive Savali. I have ran an offensive Savali before, and it can put in work if pre prepared correctly for it. Overall, I don't think Team Synergy does be strong suit here. There's a lot of repeated typing across the board here. There's like technically two normals. You have two steals. Like there's just you don't have ways to kind of counterbalance your team with multiple typing. Multiple typing sometimes is not the worst if you can plan around it and prep around it correctly. I feel like it was a slight miscount on this one because of the fact your only real ghost resist is either Sil Valley Normal, which I feel like you're not utilizing as much as you can with a form, and a uh, Moltres Galar, which in some matches, Dark can actually pressure it depending on the right one. Like, hey, it's an Urshifu. Switch it in. Oh, you just get dead. That's it. And I mean, there's also. Oh, yeah. I will say there's also beware, but like depending on the ghost type, it's not switching in because that thing like isn't like the special defense not the best. Yeah, it's the only good thing about it is because it's fluffy, which helps its defense, but it's weakened by fire moves. So like, yeah, a chandelure could just run rampant on this team. Yeah, done correctly. Even that a good. Special attacking, like, ghost type with, like, good coverage. Like, at least decent coverage can probably do numbers on a beware. Yeah, and also, like I said with him, you're really never bringing Cutie Fly unless you are that desperate to bring webs for a matchup. Which, if that case, I feel like you're wasting a Mon slot and you're bringing basically five out of your nine every single week then, which is really kind of bad because it's literally half your team is what you're bringing every single week. Yeah. So, personally, for me, this was one of my lowest ranks, but it wasn't my lowest, lowest rank, just because I think some of the mons on this team could be really good. It's got really good, unique kind of synergy with some pieces to it, and 
that's the only saving grace of the team that I like about it. We'll obviously get into my both me and Drew's actually worst ranked team in a bit. Uh, I was but gonna say, we were, I was going to spoil it a bit saying we are, have the same one. Not going to say who. Oh, we'll yeah. get to it eventually. But this was the reason why this one wasn't my worst, though, was because, again, I like some of the pieces that can really work with this team and the type of uniqueness of it. Overall, though, yeah. we're going to see what Paul C. does. It's his first season here with us, so let's hope he has a good season. Uh, yeah. yeah, we do see that he already has a win, but yeah. he's obviously started off the obviously. season strong, so hopefully obviously everything else goes can, well for him. They can prove us wrong. Exactly. And also, before we continue, we just want to preference this. These are just opinions. They are yeah. not to be taken super try-hard seriously. We are just pointing out things to help people realize, and if they want to fix it, they can. But if they want to prove us wrong and show this team is better than anything else, they may well go ahead. I've seen people that have done this before. I actually had a good buddy of mine. He has a team, and he ranks them so low. Those teams that were so low, they won championships because of that. Yeah. So all because we yeah. place it here doesn't mean your team is out and is bad. Yeah. You can are prove you us wrong, like, and you can win this championship. Yeah, it's or even that there isn't anything, like, completely terrible, you know? Yeah, you can like, also prove that you can 6 0 Drew easy. easy. That's all right. But anyways, so, up next, we have our second coach. He's another new coach to the season. It in Joshua in the Hopes Peaks the Oxes. Now, Josh is ranked number 9 for Drew and number 8 for me. So, Drew, go ahead and let everyone know why you rank this team relatively high. Uh, I, me personally, I really like the bulk. Like, it, I feel like the bulk here synergizes well with each other. They have decent speed tiers. Like, I think what really holds this team back is the fact that the offense here really relies on setting up. Because most of them... Other than maybe like Choice Band or like like Blaze Ken, maybe like Choice Specs throw them. Like other than those guys, most of the time you're gonna be running like set up on all the mods you wanna be all set up. Like RCS of Calm Mind, Forest and Scissor, like Nasty Pots, Tornadus, it's it like Calm Mind Confe, you're gonna be running a lot of setup here. It's there's nothing really much that just kind of goes in and clicks a button, like, immediately. Yeah, the so way um, with the way I like this team, I think the removal on this team is actually very well done. I think the removal yeah. is very balanced off. I do think the spin option is a little weak, but having three solid defoggers on a team I think is really, really good. I, and Haunch, I know what you're saying. No, we're not ranking this 16 just because there's a compay. Get over yourself. Yeah, exactly. Also, I do want to add one more thing before we go on. Go ahead. Otherwise, one negative I do forgot to mention is the hazards on this team is also not the best. Because the only removal, well, not removal, the hazards on this team is Sandslash, and that is it. Arceus. <laughs> and Arceus. But you don't want to be running Stealth Rock and Arceus most of the time. Yes. Maybe some matchups, depending, but majority of games, you want to be running other Arceus then. Yeah. But yeah, that, that was one of the big things that kind of critiqued the team and really kind of held it back for me, was I believe removal was perfect. Removal was great. But when you have things like Arceus, Giratina Origin, which hits incredibly hard, and even mons like Slow King as well. Like you need that hazard chip to really pressure a team. And I also felt like if you had the hazard setting options, there's options to run potential Defiant, which I actually no, I think it's Defiant on the genies. I think all of the genies except uh, Lando I get Defiant. So there is possible take chances to take advantage of Defiant, which is really really cool about it. And also, I do think there is kind of some uniqueness to it. Like, I think Tailwind with Tornadas helps some of the pieces of this team really well as well. I do think there's a decent enough Trick Room option with having Slow King on this team as well, which is pretty nice. 
I do think the wish support from Audino is pretty good in terms of it helps with that fighting weakness with having some of the best fighting checks and Glow King and Giratina on your team. And for anyone's wondering, that is a speed boost mega bla speed boost blaze again, not regular blaze again. If anyone's just wondering about that, that's just third Uber. But also, I do want to mention that for a budget regen card, I think Audino and Glow King is. Like, oh, yes, of course. Not that bad. They balance off each other decently well. Yeah. But, yeah, overall, I do think, like Drew said, this seems very much head up. Like, you have only Giratina, Specs, Specs Wash, Specs Torn, and, like, a Life Orb Glow King, potentially. That's all you really have. Like, everyone could say Scizor, but sometimes Mega Scissor really needs to have either run to be adamant, like max attack or something like that, or sword stance to be reliant on what it can do. Some people love to use it more as like a defensive offensive piece to it, which is very understandable, 100%. But you really want Mega Scizor to get some KOs. You really have to make the Scizor pretty much one of your best offensive pieces going against a lot of teams. And it's also one of those ones you kind of have to rely on. And that's the other thing I, don't, I think I felt a little weak about this team was the relying on certain mods to always be hazard removals every single time, which I think is kind of bad. But overall, I think Josh's team came out really, really good. He did obviously change it up a little bit after and post transactions, but overall, I think his team looks very, very nice. Yeah, so I think that's all you really have to say about this team. Yeah. I, shall we go, move on to the man, the myth, the legend himself. And the one that's recording the video. It's your boy. Whoa. Thriller here. And my team, you guys can already see. You're already going like, what on God's earth? Did he just do a Kyle A? And you know what? You're damn right I did a Kyle A. I went, I had third pick overall in the draft, which was both good and bad. Uh, it was good because I got some try some mons out. That I wanted to try. And it's bad because uh, I got sniped so much with what I wanted to do originally. I wanted to go sun, like almost like a full sun mode, or at least a half sun mode, with Reshiram Ground on Venusaur. I wanted to, but a certain someone later in the draft stole my ground on round one. Now, but now I can bully you about getting sniped with ground on. Do I, do, do I need to bring up, do I need to bring up Smeargle? Yeah, no, I can I can bully you about Groudon. <laughs> do I need to bully you also about free for alls? Oh, true. Or do I need I to bully mean, about the three ran bats we had where you lost all three of them? We don't talk about those. Yeah, that's what I thought, we boy. Anyways, that. back to business at hand. My team was Reshram, Darkrai, Kyogre, Zapdos, Seismato, Dragovich, Mega Agron, Ludicolo, Vino, Torkoal, and the homie Shellman. Now, what's really great about my team. You literally have a headache trying to prep for this team. It is so annoying to prep for my team. It's so hard. In some cases, some people know what mode I could bring. I could bring a sun mode. I could bring rain. But here's something you have to figure out. I could bring both rain and sun, or not even bring sun or rain, and I could actually have a team that balances itself without any usages from the team itself, honestly. Like, this team is such a pain to prep for, especially when you've got a Reshiram in Sun, a Dracovish in Rain, which has no switch-ins at this point in time, and I have some of the best Rain offense with this team, I have some of the best Sun offense with this team. The hazards, I will admit, are a little lacking. Obviously, Shelmet picks up the Toxic Spikes and Spikes any for my team, but I have really good Rockers in Toad, Agron, and Torkoal, and I have really good offense. I think some of my defense is even really good as well. I think if I had to critique my team, obviously, I really would have to say my Hazard Control is at least a little bit of the bottom tier of that part, just because of that. And where Drew actually ranked my team was number seven, I actually ranked myself at number six. And the reason why I named myself number six is even I realized there is a little bit of a problem with this team. A lot of multiple typing across the board, which again, like I said in the previous ones, can hinder her. And plus, is my team, the one main thing that holds it back is the reliance on a weather potentially to win a match. 
where it's in terms right. of speed or in terms of offense. I have to potentially rely on a weather to do damage. And also, yeah. finally, I finally got Darkrai after fucking how many tries of this Uber stuff I wanted to get. He's finally on my team and he's never going anywhere. But with that so being said, I'm going to give it to Drew now to talk about how he ranked my team number seven. So, a lot of the stuff that Dweller mentioned, I can say the same. I'd say probably my biggest gripe, personally, isn't actually the, like, removal and stuff. It's more so, it's sometimes I feel like your team, like, yeah, it could be hard to prep for, but on the other hand, you could have some weird synergies going on, personally, with prepping. Because it's like, maybe one game, like, rain is good, but also, like, Reshiram also goes hard in. So it's like, you're kind of hampering Reshiram. Or, like, vice versa. Like, you could have, like, a Dracovich really good one game, but Sun is also really good that game. So it's like, what do you choose? And it's like, it's a weird middle ground, you know? Oh, yeah, 100%. Is that's my biggest gripe, but like is other than that, I will say with the stuff you do have, like it can be scary. I from last season personally, I can attest to the fact just how scary Reshiram can be, and with stun, that thing is going to fucking wreck teams. Like that is scary. That's more scary so, than Terry. It is. It can be very hard to for, especially when there's also stuff like rain boosted vicious rent, and like a hundred percent thunders, thunders and hurricanes from Zapdos. Like that is just nasty. You always want to know how bro- broken Dragonfish is in my match against my uh, opponent, which was Josh. Yeah, uh, he had I think a Rotom around like sixty five or seventy percent. When I vicious rend it, it died. And that was defensive yeah, Rotom. It's, it's, it's very hard to switch into, even if it's resistant. Like, you need something very bulky. And what was one and thing I really liked resistant. about Dragonfish on this team, I drafted the perfect rain counterpart to a lot of the, the waters out there. Seismitoad, yeah. if you guys don't know, because of the beautiful mechanics of Gen 8, he now magically learns his grass move called Power Whip which now shuts down any and main offensive checks my opponents have to my team now. Which means Lapras, pretty much see you by. Mantine, I've got Rock Move. You can't touch me. Vaporeon, Power Whip. Gastron, Power Whip. You can now never wall this boy. And honestly, Gyarados or Sidotoad is one of your best water companions to pair with Dragonfish because they have the perfect counter to the water absorb strats. Even then, you can bluff what's done and run water absorb and just sit on them and press power whip. Like. Toe clicks button. It, yeah, you click the button and it's funny. Yeah. But yeah. Like I said, the main things I took away from my team was the reliance and also the fact that, you know, has removal is rarely kind of weak a little bit on this team and only relies on two Pokemon to be removing on this aspect of that front. But overall, I think my team is just super scary. And I think it's one of the most creative teams I've ever drafted. Even Haunch himself said he's damn glad he doesn't have to face this team because he just would have been having a nightmare. All right. All right. Up next, we have the other man of the hour. Oh, I wonder who this is. I don't know. Some guy that likes pirate ships, apparently. Uh, well. It, it it's a pirate wheel. What do you expect? I know. So, yeah, we have our boy Drew, and Drew actually ranked himself number five, but I personally ranked Drew number three. So, Drew, how about so, you go ahead and talk about your team a little bit with what you fought with, and then overall, go over yeah. the pros and cons of your team. Yeah, so my thought process was going into this was that I, first off, I, as you can see, a bit of. I, I learned a bit from Jordy EV last season with the Arceus Water and Rayquaza, but I was like, you know what? 
Let's make this hyper offense. Let's make this click as much buttons as possible. So I'm like, yeah, let's get Rayquaza, Mega Mawile, Mian Shell, Raikou, and then like get the blessy for any skulls and toxins coming your way. And bam, y'all got a fatty right there to take everything. Teleport into Mega Maw, click buttons, and then bam, you're good. I will say my hazards game this time around, not very good. It's mainly just Blissey and Camera Up, and one of them the Camera Up. There's also Arceus and Mega Mawile, but like, it's a Mega Mawile and an Arceus. Like, I, it's very hard to fit on their sets. And, but like, and I believe me and Thrill were talking about this when making rankings. I will say, I, my defense is very reliant on Lissy and here and Hina. So, if one of them break like taken down, uh I am gonna have a bit of trouble switching into stuff. So it's gonna be very difficult and also another thing is that I feel like with this team, like, yeah, I'm most likely just gonna be bringing very bulky Giratina because with how this team fits, it's kinda meant to be more defensive, it's meant to be like the main defogger, because that is also my main weakness, is removal, because that is my best defogger, and removal in general, other than like Serena, but like, I'm not bringing Serena every week, so, yeah, that's my general thoughts and opinion. Yeah, the reason I put Drew's team so high up was just those first three mods. Just the fact that you have set up Arceus, a banded, if not set up, Life Orb variant, Rayquaza, and a huge power Mega Mawile. Those three alone, it just screams, what the hell do I do against this team? Also, not sleeping off the other good offensive, like Choice Specs. Raikou is really good. Banded or Life Orb being show hits hard. Even an offensive Serena really can put in a lot of pressure. I mean, I still agree. I don't know why the hell there's a camera up on this team. I think he just picked it for style points. But, but like like I said, and this is a fair criticism, guys. His defense literally relies. You can argue and say, you know, he can run defensive Arceus. But more times than not, Arceus is kind of made more so to be offensive or a set-up offensive threat in most of the Uber stand words and all that shit. Unless it's normal Arceus. If it's normal Arceus... I could see that being more of the defensive piece to a team as well because of the fact that it's a more better mod to take advantage of recover as a defensive piece to a team. And with Raikou, he has also set up options with Calm Mine. He's got bulk up options with Mian Shao. He's got, again, the spin support, which can make Serena a fast offensive setter as well. And again, like I said, he's, the removal, Defog is very much only on Giratina, and spin is really on Serena. Like I said, he doesn't want to force Arceus to be a defogger, because if he's doing that, Arceus is going to have to be defensive that week. That's the only reason he would ever do that. Yeah, also, I know how it's like to bring this up a bit, but did you know that Choice Band, Reckless, High Jump Kick, Mian Shell does more damage than Mega Metacham's High Jump Kick? It's well, funny. I don't, I, I just don't, how's that even possible? Mega Mega Sham has pure power. He did the, I did the, I checked on the damage calculator. He did mathifications. I did mathifications. It checks out. <laughs> it is funny. Yeah, that's overall Drew's team. Like I said, the one big thing that took away from his team from being really like between like two and one was, again, the reliant on defense and just alone. His offense can probably carry him from a game, 
But if he runs into a really bad match where his offense just cannot break through good defense, he's going to have a struggle in this matchup. Anyway, that, let's... With our next team, we have the Tokyo Tyranitars by Raikou, one of the new coaches, I believe. Or I think it's been a coach we've had, but it hasn't competed they yet. A, they were in a different div uh, before yeah. joining you guys here. Yep, and they are one of the uh, first-time coaches here, which is really great. And this is both me and Drew's worst-ranked team. We have them oh, ranked number 16. And here's the reason, and we're going to go over reason. We're first going to go over to the team and go over some of the positives we like with this team. But I'm going to let you guys know the positives are not going to last that long. We're going to, no offense to you, Raikou, but we're going to really dig yeah. into your team and point out why some of the things just don't work here. First off, I think the offensive pairing with Mega Lucario and Kieran White is absolutely disgusting. I think yeah, that is gross. just so good on his end, which fantastic for or her. I forgot if Raikou's a he or her. If I if I got your gender wrong, please know I apologize in advance, Raikou. But oh, also I, I like some of the bulk of this team. Like Primarina pair with Lugia, that's pretty decent of bulk. You know, Primarina paired off of Rotom Heat, that's also really good defensive right there. You know, you got some just good pieces here and there. And that's about all the good stuff we have left. So, Drew, yeah. let's go into some of the digging into why this seems bad. I'll let you take it away first. So, I was going to say, I do like the Uberzy effect. I think they work well together. It's just, there's some weird synergy stuff going on. Like, for example, Hippowdon has, like, Sandstream, I believe. Yeah, Santa Street, that's the name of the ability. My brain just turned off for a second. So, obviously, that's Santa Street. And Lugia has multi skill. What breaks multi skill? Sand. And you don't want that to be digging into your Lugia because it's only going to be taking more damage. And it's going to be bringing your multi skill. And it's kind of weird. Also, there's nothing really to be a sand. It personally, like, I think it kind of hinders this team more than it actually helps. Because it's just, nothing really wants to be taking extra chip on this team. It's kind of weird. One thing you also didn't talk about is where's the removal on this team? There is oh, yeah. none. There, here's the thing about this team. I think the grass typing he picked was really bad. Superior does not get access. We do allow um, cut moves in the game, but the only one we ban is hidden power. And that's where her Superior shines in a format with in being able to use cut moves is hidden power. And that's kind of sad for a Pokemon, but it's honestly the truth. But as a defogger and as a grass type, it's bad at both, in my opinion. Like, it's one of those mons you can kind of deter people from defogging away your hazards because you just kind of give evasion boosting to Superior and also, you know, preventing Superior to come against, you know, if you had sticky webs on your team and bring sticky webs and all that. I can understand that, but it's a bad gimmick, in my opinion. Superior has very to little no coverage at all. So I feel like a different grass type would have fit better on this team. And like I said, Hippowdon just does not fit on this team. There is only one abuser of a hip hop on this team with Hippowdon, and that is literally a rock rub. And that thing's literally never come into a match. Not even once, probably. Maybe one time if he's lucky. Also, the only other removal other than the only other removal he has are like Lucia, I believe, and Rona Heat. But both are weak to rocks. And, like, so they'll be either needing to bring food, or it's just, like, they're going to be taking, like, stealth rocks every time they come in, and they're going to be debugging that. I personally you think, know? and for his team, like, you look at Lugia, you look at Rotom, you look at Kieran White, three Pokemon that are probably going to be forced to run heavy D boots almost every single week, which just cripples their usages. In my personal opinion, like I've used offensive Rotom Heat. I have six out someone with offensive Rotom Heat. So Rotom Heat can be used super offensively. Choice specs, name a switch in, Kieran White. There's that for you. 
And then again, you just have from a, like you have Lugia, which is designed to more be just a stall mon rather than a mon like Defog. Like maybe there's a certain matchup where Defog fits, but after that certain matchup, do you think you're gonna run Defog every single week? Like Rotom, yeah, you can kind of almost run Defog every single week, but that means you're forcing it to be defensive every week, and that's just gonna be super predictable over time. And just you're just crippling the usages of your team. I also think your ghost type is not the best as a fighting switch in, just for the fact that most fighting types get this move called knockoff and basically just one shot you every single time. I also think the hazard setting on this team is really, really bad. You only have one rocker and a T spiker, and that's basically it. And personally speaking, Drapion is one of those mons that benefits from items that help it so it cannot run hazards. So something like a um assault vest drapeon is really good so overall this team was just ranked bad just because of the way the team was drafted around and there's like just no proper synergy around it yeah, also i kind of want to mention is that i think kind of the speed tiers are a bit weird there's like no speed tiers really they're all over the place kind of yeah i like three of the mods are like they're all a lot of them are like clustered in like similar speed tiers or like areas. Like there's like there are three between like one hundred and ten and one hundred and thirteen. And there are two ninety five. Yeah. And it's like that is already a half your team, like already in similar speed tiers. So it's kinda weird. Yeah, a hundred percent. Don't mind me, guys. I'm just quickly uh, just making some notes real quick just to make sure we're catching up on our numbers here just so we're good on that. All right. So the next coach we have here is Jordan Plays, who is making their debut. They were in speed tours with us and have been in the server for a little while. Uh, but this is going to be the first season with us here. I have actually known Jordan from another league called the LPL, which is run by one of our good coaches, in uh, Septile, and Jordan it was one of the top runners in their season, so they're coming to try their best here. Now, Jordan's team is quite interesting. Drew has Jordan ranked at number 6. I have Jordan ranked at number 7. And I think something that we both agreed was the defense on this team is pretty solid. I think the defense on this option team is really good. I think the offense is more kind of reliant on Pokemon either being banded, specs, possibly set up, and just overall kind of just taking advantage of the team and just really taking advantage of some of the typing on this team. Because again, it's one of those teams that has multiple typings across the board that in some way don't synergize all that well together. And there's also, for some reason, there's just a Simisage on this team. Like, we don't know why they're there. I agree. I also think it would be higher if it wasn't for the fact that a good ice type kind of runs through this team because the only real resist is Mega Blastoise. Like, if Mana has a freeze dry, like, it's gonna be very hard for this team to switch it. <laughs> Cure him white. <clears throat> That's our Cure him in general. Which well, every well, form well to be honest, so, Kieran White's probably more scary against this team than any other yeah, one. Yeah, but still. But yeah, like any freeze, pretty strong freeze fight is going to be kind of a problem for this team. Yeah, because like here's the thing: like some of these mons work well in Ubers. I think Zapdos is one of those good Ubers. One of those mons to use in Ubers because it's one of those best breaking type of mons as well. Skarmory, I think, is one of the ideal mons to have in Ubers because it's one of your best hazard setters in the game as well. Same can be said also for like Sylveon in terms of being just an offensive support Pokemon. But one of the things we also critique about this team, really the hazard setting and removal is very lackluster for this team. Again, your flying types are your only real option. Because if you guys don't know, Mega Blastoise is actually the third Uber for Jordan's team because we allow Shell Smash on that Pokemon. Don't ask us why we allow it. We just did it because we thought it would be funny. How funny Shell Smash? And go first. But yeah, I think the offense is kind of reliant on a few Pokemon. I think the defense is decently done well together. 
But I feel like this team is reliant in certain roles, and I think that's what's kind of holding it back a little bit for both clubs. And another thing is that there is a lot, I mean a lot of duplicate typing. Like, most of this team will have, like, pretty sure the only members on this team that doesn't have the same type as another Mon is Sylveon, like a Lolan Muck, and the Cinderace. Uh, that dragon Poison, Poison Dart. <laughs> yeah. Wait. Oh, wait. Never mind. It's just Sylveon and the Simi Sage. Um. So those are literally everything else. It has a similar type to another Mon on the team. So it's like very weird in that aspect. Yeah. Just. I mean, overall, I think this team is still pretty solid. It can definitely be usage. But it's just going to really come down to how Jordan kind of takes use of this team. I definitely think a lot of people need to bring more of, like, offensive breakers for this team, which does good force a good amount of prep for this. But overall, I, I just don't know how it's going to win well for Jordan's team. But we'll have yeah. to see how it goes this season. Oh, so, all right. now, Up next, we have a Seth Infernape here, or Sephernape, whichever he likes to go by. Another newcomer to the season. And he was Drew's number four, but my number five. No, wait, he was your number three, and he was my number five. Yeah, this, me personally, I think this team can be very terrifying. Like, in the right set, like, situations. Like, rolling, like, just in general, this thing is scary. Like, the Arceus plus Rift. That Grom can be scary, especially since you have like grassy terrain to help like neuter earthquakes. And just in general, there's this team is very hard to switch into, especially with Mega Aerodactyl and the Infernape. And it's just very hard switching. I think the biggest, my biggest thing is probably like sometimes I feel like. The roller boom can be kind of like weird, definitely with the like the Galarian Weezing sitting right there. Cause like if you bring like two of the three abilities, like don't really synergize at all with like the roller boom. Because if you bring Missy Surge, you're taking out the whole thing where it's like the earthquake resistance. If you go levitate, you're not getting healed. The only one I am pretty sure that you can actually get terrain is the neutralizing gas, surprisingly, I think, because I think that only blocks like the terrain from coming, not actually when it's out. So, other than that, it's like very. Weird synergy with the Galarian Weezing and the Rillaboom. And not only that, you're going to be taking more damage with the Slowbro. Like, if they bring an offensive grass. So, it's kind of interesting, I think. Yeah, one thing I want to point out is that there's a lot of things I do agree with. And another thing is that there's not a ton of hazard setting, I feel like, that's super reliable on this team. Like, you've got... Steel and Ape, which can run rocks, but they're probably never going to really run rocks. You can kind of run rocks on Mega Arrow, but Mega Arrow really doesn't want to do that. That needs only two of your mods to be reliable rockers for you each week, and that is going to be Mill Tank and Mudsdale. But here's the thing about Mudsdale. Honestly, for a ground type, this is the worst ground type to pair with a terrain team because... Muzzle's best ground move is literally Earthquake, and that gets hindered by that. So it's going to force it to run either High Horsepower or Stomping Tantrum in order to do damage in terrain, which means you're getting less power behind your hits with this Pokemon, which doesn't mean it's going to guarantee the KOs. It's not going to be able to guarantee the damage that you really want on the team. So I just feel like for a ground type, it doesn't fit on this team, in my personal opinion. I do think having a Mon like Miltank is really good because you take advantage of people trying to bring like Grassy Glide users 
Grash type users because of Sap Simmer, which I think is a really cool idea with that. As someone that's used Arc Steel last season, uh, I can definitely see why this thing is so really good. Offensively, it hits extremely hard. Steel is one of the best typings to use offensively and prepare correctly for. And it's also and one, of, one of the best, if not the best, defensive typing in the game. So, if that's yeah. kind of scary. Yeah, 100%. I also think, you know, Zach Rom paired with it is really nice. I do think uh, Monkey paired with them is really nice as well. I think the, the uh, teleport support that, you know, something like, you know, Slowbro and the U-turning support from Rillaboom and Infernape is also really good as well. Pivoting is just decent on this team. It's not strong. Also, I just feel like something like a Spirit Tomb as well on this team just does not fit on here really all that much. It doesn't really look like it belongs on this team. Yeah. It just seemed like he grabbed it just to have a Dark type, not to lose to Psychic, which his team kind of does just lose to a really good Psychic type. Yeah, I mean, it's... I... Not as much, I'd say, like with Arceus. It depends on the Psychic type, I think. Like a Mega Medicham might be difficult for this team because like an Arceus steel can like sit on a lot of psychic types. Well like it's just kinda of, I do agree though that the spirit tomb kinda of feels out of place here. Not really sure why it's here. Other than hey, you have a types you don't have. That's about it. Yeah, so with that being said, though, uh, there's some other things I want to point out here is that Mega Arrow did get access to Dragon Dance, so I do like the fact that Mega Arrow gives him an Elamon that can cripple Scarpers. In some way, he can literally have Arrow on this team, and you have to think in the back of your mind if he's going to be Dragon Dance, because then he Man, shuts down every single Scarper in the game because of that. He true. literally destroys and counters Scarpers with a plus one DD. Priority move just for Mega Arrow. So th that was the only one thing I want to point out. Also, he technically got the somewhat mascot pick with his name with Infernape, which, you know, shouts to that. Yeah, shout out. All right. If, well, if only he got the Glycopod. Yeah, he would have been better off not having the Glycopod, to be honest. <laughs> All right. The next team we're going to talk about here is is Assault Wolf. Now, originally, Wolf was going to be with us last season, but unfortunately, due to some things that happened yeah. right, I think, before the season even started, he unfortunately had to drop, and his friend, JTK, took over. So we appreciate you, JTK, for taking over Wolf's team and finishing up the season. But Wolf now is ready to be in this season, and he's ready to have some fun. With Wolf... Alfredo ha Drew here has him as a 14. I have him as 12. And I'm going to actually take the lead on this one here. And the main reason why we ranked him relatively low is just this team just has pieces to it that doesn't make sense. Like, I think the multiple typings of water makes no sense. I think the synergy behind some of the team it does not really help. I also think, like, Dawn Wings is so out of place on this team. Like, just overall, this team just is very weird. It has really, in my opinion, bad removal in this team as well. I think the hazard setting is just a Ferroform, and it's just a Ferroform. You can maybe run spikes with Toxic Spikes with Marini, but that's if you're willing to sacrifice a slot for Toxic Spikes. And also, the like I said with the removal, you're having Defog on Volcanion, which I think wastes Defog. Um, uh, Volcanion's options to be offensive because I think offensive Volcanion is one of the best offensive breakers in the game because of its good stab. You have Mons like Zeraora, which are now forced to run boots almost every single week. You have things like like Therm also, which you're not going to force to run rapid spin unless you absolutely are that like crippled and have to have to do that, which again takes away the offensive you can do with Feromosa. And then there's Defog on Infinity, but you don't want to get rid of your own terrain, which can the terrain support on this team can be really, really good. Overall, if you wanted stuff like Dawn Wings on this team and wanted to get another Trick Roomer, I can see where this team can kind of go with Trick Room in some manners, because I can see there's going to be some like Room Service Crocodile, Room Service Volcanion, Room Service Finny. Like I see a lot of potential for Trick Room with this team. 
But the fact that Don Wins is just slapped on there and there's no real way to kind of counter Ghost on this team, it's just it's just a weird sore of thumb that just sticks out. I also would like to say that certain fairy types might be a trouble for this team. Like, I say if any uh, garbed fairy type that can outspeed Faramosa or are, like, bulky enough to take, a like, a Salamence double edge or something, they are going to have trouble with. Because, like, let's say, I'm not sure if, I have not run the cops, but, like, let's say if a Clefable can live, like, a double edge, that, taking a moon blast from that is not going to be fun. Um, and, like, frankly, he might as well just run return because return is stronger. Uh, on the Mega Zombies? Yeah, because Return becomes Aerial Eight and it's technically stronger. Yeah, and then so does Double Edge. But Return's like 120, I think. No, it's 102. I believe. Well, I personally think Return's better just because you don't get any recoil damage. Oh, true, yeah. But even even with recoil, like a bulk, very bulky fairy, like that can take the hit. And deal good damage back, or a, like a scarf fairy that can out be like a fireball and might give this team a bit of trouble, because your only real offense that's right against it is like I'd say like a ferrothorn, but that's like ferrothorn. You need to run like gyro ball on that thing to offensively check fairy types. So yeah, it's, you might have these. Certain matchups, you might have trouble with this fairy type. Like a Toja Kiss or something. Yeah, 100%. Alright, with that being said, we are going to kick it off to our next coach, being a kid named Finger. And Drew already had a big gripe with this team. So, he, with that gripe, he named this team number 15, and I named this team number 14. And I know we're all thinking, like, wait, with those first four picks or five, why is he so low? Well, ladies and gentlemen, let us school you in a little history lesson. Drew, what is the one typing on this team that absolutely hurts this man? A good ghost type runs through this team like a butter. Like, what I'm trying to say is that it's like knife going through butter. It's like... The only resist is a munch lag. But you don't want to bring munch lag because everything else on the team are absolute the rest. Like, look at this team. What what mod do you want to replace with a munch lag? Like Now for Drew Drew we have to finally breathe because he can finally rant this out now. Yeah, I can rant this out here. Yeah, but um, like, but let's go over some of the positives we first like. I first think the offensive pairing between Gengar to Solgaleo to a Libero, which is what Cinderace's Avi is, and Garchomp alone. Even if you can kind of spice in Galadarm a little bit, that is a really good offensive synergy and kind of really support each other relatively decently well as well in terms of what they can kind of cover in terms of their weaknesses and stuff like that. I also think the bulk between Slowking and Tangrowth and even Togekiss and to some degree pair really, really well, really nice with each other as well. But so now we're going to get to some of the big gripes. Obviously, the big gripes is bad. It's a really bad weakness to Ghost. Whereas also you have a bad weakness to relatively good ground types on this team. Fast ground and hard hitting grounds really going to punish this team. Like, well, Mama I, Swine, well, where are you at, buddy? Yeah, I will say, I. I might have been going on a little bit of rant, but I, like I said, there are pauses on this team. But it's, like Soto sort of said, the offense on this is terrifying. Like, there, it's so hard to switch in on this team. It's just, there are cer- certain typings I just think kind of also run through this team, too. It's like a team where is either going to be ran through or, like, you are going to run through the other team. There's no in-between here. Something we also want to need to really point out is that there is only one Stealth Rocker on this team. 
That is yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that very is a guard chop, which yes, guard chop can run, and defensive chop is a viable set. So it's very possible that he can run, but he really doesn't want to run rocks on this thing every single week. Also, his removal is basically a toga kiss. Yeah. Yeah. So there was the reason why that. Now the reason why I personally just barely ranked this up. As high as I did, because I felt like the removal was actually, like, even if it's just Togekiss, it's better. And plus, the offense pairs off really well with it. The bulk really pairs off with it. But we still have to gripe it down for what it has in terms of what it does. Like, this team is relatively weak to rocks. This team is relatively weak to the spikes. Like, there are certain hazards that really... And also, if you really look at this man's team, and you look at what he could have done, there is one thing about this team that could have made it better, but I'm actually not going to say what it is so this person gets the idea. So we're going to be evil, and that's how your punishment is, kid named Finger. That, that's what we're going to do to you. You're never going to yeah, know what we're going to tell you strat is. We're, we're just not going to explain further. Yeah, but overall, I do think this team is relatively nice, but there are some very big holes that are just clear yeah. as they opened on this team. Like I said, I'm... I did not mean to be going on that long rant. Like I said, I do think there are some positives to this team. It's just, I needed to get my little, I needed to get, I was holding that in the entire time, and I needed to get that out. Uh, I needed to express my, the ghost thing, the <laughs> butter and knife analogy. All right, Drew, now take your sip of coffee and get ready for me more hyper. I am already very hyper. You should know this. I Drink more coffee! Energy. There we go. Up next, we have our boy Dashing Septile, coach of Seattle Sigalips. He was actually with us last season and just barely made the playoffs last time and ended up having, I think, going to semis, I think he did last season, if I remember correctly. At the very I least. So, yeah. I think so, I he do, did. I do remember having to verse him. Yeah, he, it was semis. I do remember versing but yeah, but This man's team originally was Sun, and he was a goat and picked up Ivysaur last time. So, shouts to oh, him. And he even true. brought yeah. Ivysaur to a few games and got a kill with it. So, But what was interesting about this time around is this team just says... Ugh, ugh. It, says, it just says name a damn switch in and the answer is nothing. Because this man's first four Pokemon are Marshadow, Genesect, Coco, and Calyrex Ice Rider, which he got in free trade actions also, which that makes me like it's broken on here. This team offensively is so scary to switch into. Like you're, You cannot prep for the offense this team has. Drew actually ranked him number 10. I ranked him number 9. And the reason why I think his team is about midway there is because I love the offense. Offense looks pretty much almost flawless with this game. It's so great with it. It's so scary. Even like the Mega Charizard with Tough Claws. Absolute monster of this team. And I even love the Zeru pick. I personally think Zeru is a fantastic Vaughn in draft league format. I think that people sleep on that thing. People don't need to claim that it's an underrated grass type or dark type for the team. It's so good. But some of the issues I see with this team and what it's lacking to be the best team possible, there is one hazard setter and only two removals. Three if you really want to count Coco. Four, if you want to count Charizard. No like, one. You don't, you're not going to be running Defog on Charizard. If anyone runs Defog on Mega Charizard X, including you, Dash, um, you might need to go see some counseling. Yeah. That, that, you don't do that. But yeah, like, the things that really hold him back, again, I think is going to be the removal. I think you're forcing Blastoise to be a defensive spin option every single week, which really kind of holds back us. In some matches, Blastoise can be super good because it has one thing over Mega Blastoise is that it won't get lower defenses because of White Herb Shell Smash, which I think is really, really good. Also, with Dawn Fan, I feel like is just being your lone rocker for the team kind of hurts it, really. Like, you're basically only running one hazard the entirety of the season. Like, honestly, if you can get some other hazards 
this team is so much more of a pain in the head to literally prep for because of the fact that just the offensive combination you have, just the, like the five mons you already have, is just stupidly good. I also personally think another trick room setter with this team would have been relatively... I think, honestly, probably one of the Slow Bro brothers or the, one of the Galler brothers in this case, when uh, Slow King or Slow Bro, obviously. I think either one of those four would have paired perfectly well here. It would have still given you a poison type that doesn't help besides being a grounded poison. But I feel like it would have been a poison type that benefits pairing with um Ars with your Calyrex Ice because of teleport plus trick room. And you can just click buttons with a banded Calyrex Ice. I also want to bring up that this team might struggle with switching into certain ground types because the only resists are Zarud and Charizard before a Mega Ball. So it's a lot... Like, unless you're bringing the rude on, uh, like, every game, like, you're gonna have a bit of trouble switching into, like, those ground types. Because everything else is, like, neutral to it. Like, yeah, you got yourself the Calyrex Ice Rider, but, like, it's also an Ice type, which is, you know, kind of notorious for being kind of having a lot of weaknesses. So, if it has decent coverage, like, it's going to be a bit of a problem. Yeah, I mean, just overall, what really holds it back is really the hazard controlling options, the kind of defensive options, because, again, you're relying on two mons to be defensive every single week for your team. And also, there's just randomly a muck, which makes no point on this team. So, yeah, the muck's just kind of there. He's just with his arm out, like, uh, well, it's all about the plot. Yeah, just kind of trying. It's trying to say hi, but like the problem is, he's just like hunch and he smells. It's true, hunch. He, bro, he just he didn't have his draft hunch. Like, <laughs> could have left out of this. Ah, I like that one. Anyways, up next, we have our warm new coach in the Calm El Burrito. We do apologize if we butcher your name. And his Holy no, Fook. Holy Fook. Holy Fook uh, team. So... And this team was very interesting for us. Drew has him at number 13. Well, I have him at number 11. And there's kind of some really big reasons why, as you can kind of alone see for this team. I think speed tier wise, this team is very kind of bad. And the fact that you're weird. like your fastest is Greninja and Mega Mewtwo X. Then your next fastest is the Veltal, which quickly follows with a Kiram. Oh, oh no. Technically, technically, it's Jirachi, which is like one. Turn over. We're going to fix that. No correction. Still technically the same, sort of. And plus, you have a Weber in Surskit, which there were so many better web options. Like, I literally point out the homie Dottler would have been better for this team. Yeah, true. I think Dottler would have been kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, this, it's kind of a weird B tiers. Like, yeah, you do have speed, but like, that's. There's such a big gap that, like, you could have a decent scarfer and might have trouble actually, like, dealing with it, you know? You know, another thing like, I kind of felt was really bad about this team was just kind of the hazard options. Because if you guys don't know, his third uber is actually Protean Greninja, which it has to be Protean. It's the only ability he can run on that Greninja. And there's, probably. like... Spikes and Toxics are nice, but it takes away a move slot for Greninja, which I think kind of gives it an advantage, but at the same time, I feel like it hinders its ability in terms of what it can yeah. do offensively for a team. Then you look at your two Rockers, which is a Clefable and a Lando. Now, Lando can vilely run the Rocks as a defensive piece, and same from Clefable. But in other times, there's a lot of better sets for Lando or Clefable in certain matchups to be able to take advantage of. There's also... 
There's also Jirachi, but like... Jirachi can viably run them as well, but again, Jirachi just wants to be choice card for flinch everything, as someone here in Call has realized that. Oh yeah, uh, we had a very traumatic experience with a Jirachi recently. But yeah, uh, in and... terms of also his hazard removal, it's very non-existent, essentially, on this team. There's only two ways it gets removed. And that's why a Lando, which can actually viably run that. And then a giant bacon bird of devil held. But at the same time, that Mon does not want to run that at all. Yeah, it's... I mean, like, with e it's like... It can still run it, it's just... It's kind of... And it feels weird that it kind of has to run it if... You're not bringing it on, like, Lando. It, because, like, that's your only other option. And if you don't, then you kind of have to stick with, like, Stealth Rock and other hazards on your side. Like, the whole game. Yeah. Kind of I, I just overall think the defense is decently good. Hazards, though, are really, really bad. Removal is kind of relatively bad. I do think some of the Mons alone on this team really do well with one another, and I'm hoping this team kind of does well. It is going to be uh, Calm's very first season with us, so hopefully Calm can really kind of prove us wrong with this team and uh, hopefully have a good season at least. So uh, let's hope for the best for them. Hopefully. With the next team yeah. we have, we have Darunian05, and we have actually a little funny story with Darunian right here. Uh, he actually almost legitimately got replaced because he got his timer messed up. But Haunch, being the good guy that he was, gave him one more chance. And luckily for Darun, he lasted the rest of the way and was able to finish drafting with us and therefore is allowed to stay with us this season. Also, he's the guy I hate because he took my he took my grout on. But anyways, uh, Drew has him ranked number 11. I have him ranked number 10. Now... There is something about this team that we both love, and that was just the Sun core aspect with having with Big Team. I think V-Create and Sun is stupidly broken. I think that is just non-existent to a switch whatsoever. But the main thing we both kind of agreed about this team was, again, a couple of the repeated typings again, which is a little bit of a bad thing for this team. But at the same time, like, there is, like, one Stealth Rocker, one Toxic Spike Setter, Actually, I think two, actually. I'm pretty sure Crowback gets Toxic Spikes. I no, think. it doesn't. It doesn't? Okay. I had a feeling. I, for some reason, I felt like I remembered seeing that. But anyways. Yeah, if I remember correctly, it doesn't. Double check. Quick, pull up the Magic Showdown button. Oh, I got I'm pulling it up. Pulling it up. Um, all right. I'm on sports right now. All right. Let's check real quick. Roll that. And let's look at Toxic Spike. Oh, yep, it does not. Okay, so the biggest thing we took away from that was, again, some of the repeating typing. He only has two hazard centers, and you look at his removal. It is a Ataria, which can do it okay. It's not preferred, though. You have a Regieleki, which is a Regieleki. And then a Crobat, which, again, is one that can do it, but it's not preferred. So the hazard removal is very little lackluster on this team. The hazard settings lackluster. And I overall feel like the synergy with this team's not great. Like, Groudon just sets Sun up for so many things to kind of counteract the team. Like, grass types. Certain grass types can actually beat Crobat. Like, for example, a certain someone has Serena here, and... Um, if that Serena got a speed boost somehow, it kind of just be. Or if anyone has chlorophyll and wants to take advantage of that, yo, Tangrove, I'm looking at you, my home man. Or if someone has a, a Venusaur. <laughs> also, I see a triple axle. Yeah. Let's talk about this ice weakness. Yeah, this. This is very bad ice weakness. He only has one resist. Well, two, but still, that is like a five to two ratio here. 
Yeah, it's and only Victini, but Victini just gets chipped by Ice Move by badly. Yeah. And there is Toxapex, but guess what? Pax, uh, there's a move called Freeze Dry, which exists right there. I think a team like the Kieran White team, literally Kieran White six sells this team itself. Yeah, he just plows through this team. Like, just slap it like a choice specs or a choice scarf on this. Bam, this thing just rolls through this team. Yeah, just overall, I feel like this team just did not come across well. Just. I feel like if he took maybe some other sun options for this team, I feel like this team would have definitely came a lot more better. Like, I think if he took Venusaur and sniped me of that, then I would have a uh, warrant for him to uh, hunt him down for that. But I feel like would have fit his team better, would have given him, I feel like, a better poison type for his team, and would have gave him a mon that really can pressure and take advantage of the sun very, really well, and really help his team. But again, also, again, like I said, there's two grounds on this team. There's two poisons on this team. Like, the, the repetitiveness of the typing is kind of bad because you really look at this team. Again, like we said before, a really good psychic type kind of shuts this team down. Also, two flying types, mind you. So, and two dragon types. So, well, technically three flying types with Mega Altaria before Mega Evolving. Yeah. So, but overall, I do think that, you know, Zyker Complete can prove that it, uh, uh, can be a really good Uber by our boy Amol out there. He's hopefully somehow watching this video in some magical way, shape, or form. But he knows how to make a Zygarde dance, and he knows how to do it when he's in this big, scary man form. And you can make the Zygarde jiggle, jiggle. That, oh, uh, okay, we're going to move on after hearing that. Up next, we have a fish that only begins with the letter N and ends with the letter 2. We have Enfish the second. And Enfish's team's very unique. And this is actually a pretty big gap because I have him at number 13, but Drew has him at number 8. Now, what I found really cool about this team was, first off, you're a C in the first four picks. In, like, the first three picks, it is Lele, Terrain, paired with a Mega Mewtwo Y. And that's terrifying. And is one of the best offensive cores in Uber formatting. And it's so scary. It's scary. And it's like, Banning Force Mega Mewtwo Y goes burr. And then you also have... The Zombazenta with the choice band, and it goes burr, and it is scary, and you don't want to be switching in much. And plus, you have a nice defensive ho that just sits in front of people and just runs toxic. It's kind of funny. You're kind I, of funny looking. No, you're kind of funny looking. At least I'm better looking. Oh! Uh -oh. All right, back to, back to back to the work. One of the things I really felt like was really bad about this team was I felt like again Hazard, and this is something that me and Drew really were pointing out throughout the entireness of this whole ranking is that there are some teams that just have god awful Hazard setting and Hazard removal, and you may think, Very "Well, bad. that's just being nitpicky." No, that's actually valid criticism to a team yeah. because it but, actually can make or break certain matches. I personally yeah. have been someone that thinks. You don't need removal to win a game. I have proven that yeah. many times before, and Drew has seen that in Rambats. <laughs> yeah, it makes me cry. Because he thought he could get me with some webs and rocks, but guess what happened there, Drew? It, 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 it was not fun. It yeah, was scary. he still lost to me with even having that stuff. But anyways, um... I will blink to make a point out here. He did make a transaction, but that transaction will not affect the ranking he had right there. But it is a transaction we will talk about a little bit. But originally, this team was just also kind of relying on bulk. There wasn't like a crazy amount of offense I was seeing from this team. Like, yeah, you got Zama, you got Hydra, you even got Aegislash to some degree. But besides, you know, Lele, Mew, Mewtwo, and Zama... There wasn't really anything that screams out, oh my god, that's scary. 
everything else just seems more annoying to deal with. I think my biggest gripe is that some I feel like all the Pokemons he has are just uh, kind of too passive, or like, like let's say like Chansey and Pukumuku, you don't want like they're both very passive. Like you can run like more bulky Aegis Slash, but like I feel like there's a bit of anti synergy with like Psychic Terrain because it's best priority move with Shadow Sneak is kind of blocked because of it. So. Yeah. And uh, there's something that would actually drop his team down probably a couple of notches for both of us. Because you guys did not know, he actually dropped Chansey for Snorlax. Now, oh, I yeah. will say Snorlax is a better normal type for this team, I feel like. Because I it doesn't uh, give off that much of a passive tra- track to it. Because Curse Lax with Rest Sleep Talk can be scary. But yeah. he lost an option to Hazard Setter, and now he only has one Hazard Setter in the entire team, and that is the Stunfisk, a Flapjack yeah. Pancake, if you will. So his Hazards are kind of not very... And even his removal is terrible. His removal is a Hydreigon and a ho and a Lele, but Defog Lele... That defeats the whole purpose of what Lele is supposed to be doing with this team. So you're relying on Defog on a Ho-Ho and a Hydreigon. And only one of those mons is probably being forced Defog every single week. I mean, and even like with Ho-Ho, if it gets its boost knocked off, it's not going to be switching into Stealth Rock that much. Like, it's going to be very hard for it to switch in without the boots on and it's like speaking of knockoff i think this team suffers a bit well not as much with snorlax but it did suffer a bit i think with knockoff yeah this was just like click knockoff you get a free item away yeah like you yeah you got yourself the zamazenta but do you really want to lose your choice there like, I don't think you'd want to lose its choice there. So basically, you're just forcing uh, yourself to get chip on your team, which definitely holds it back from being anything stronger where it could be possibly. Yeah. And so I personally think it's very... Uh, I do think what made me, it so high for me is just the sheer, like offense of this team. Because I remember as as you can probably see, I was uh, we were playing week one. I remember I was terrified of this offense. Especially Mega Mewtwo. Because You I had think, a Giratina, you were fine. But like it's like I don't think you realize how much coverage this thing has. And if you have if you set up like one at the bar with it, it just run. It can run through a team. Well, if you let nasty play even happen, that's your own fault. It, it depends on. No, no, the, the, no, no, There's no debate. That would be your own fault if you gave yeah. it a free nasty play. Yeah. But anyways, we're into our last three teams, and our first team is gonna be. Actually, you know what? We're gonna skip. Because both these next two we're going to talk about are literally number one and number two. But let's go ahead and get it to our number four. That's for both of us. And that is our boy, David. And David was in National Decks, I think, last season. Yeah, last season he was in National Decks. And he got his butt whooped by Maddie. So shout outs to Maddie. And then this season he's going to get his butt whipped by both Drew and me. Prepare for week two, David. Prepare your booty. Prepare whatever week we play, because I completely forgot. But David's team is very interesting. He has Mag, Palkia, Mega Kang, Gliscor, Vaporeon, Lottie, Patron, Amoongus, and Shuckle, Whipple, Duckle. 
And if you guys don't know, Mega Kang is his third Uber because we do allow the Seismic Toss lift off for there. So that would explain why Mega Kang is his third Uber, just so we clarify that. But overall, I think the defensive synergy with this team is very, very good. I think Mag plus Gliscor plus Vaporeon is, and even Heatran to some degree, very, very good. I think it's very, really good. One of the things we also liked was just the offense between Palkia, Mega Kang, Latios, even Heatran, even Magirna as well for its terms of offense was super good. But what holds this team back is that this team is very reliant on Gliscor being in Stealth Rocks and even Heatran potentially for Rocks or a Shuckle. Yeah, I also think that even though it is good, this team is good with Web. It feels like, me personally, I feel like it's a bit too reliant on Web because its fastest bond is Latios. Yeah, in personal uh, in personal strive, there's only three mods on his entire team that really fully take advantage of it. Yes, there's Heatran, but even Heatran would probably have to be Scarf still. Doubt's counteract scarfers that would take advantage from webs yeah. even said can be same about palkia to a certain standard but just overall this team kind of is a little lackluster i also personally would have liked to have gotten another trick room user with magirna and would have made this team have a little bit of a trick room element as a side so section for this team because as someone that's used magirna under trick room and has got a 6-0 kill streak with that thing with trick room uh, this mod under Trick Room, if you get a Call Mind or two off, it literally just claims KOs and clicks buttons. Like, Magirna is such an underrated threat that no one always fully respe respects for, and then they get punished for it. Magirna, yeah, you, you gotta press... Oh, I was just gonna say, you always have to be cautious with a Magirna, because if you let that thing set up, that thing is a demon. And what's Andy. so great about Magirna is you can never know what this thing sets up. This thing could be just pure Calm Mind. This thing could be Agility Calm Mind. This thing could just be a Jimmy Solo. It could be Iron Defense. It could be freaking Trick Room. It could be Shift Gear. Like, you cannot prepare for Magirna as well as you want. It could even be Choice Scarf, Choice Specs. Like, you are not ready to deal with Magirna under no sense of the situations around that. But some of the big things we also took away from David's team was his removal. It is only in the form of two Pokemon. And only one of the two is literally bringing it almost every single week, if need be. And that is Defog on Gliscor. And the Defog on Latios, and that is probably only going to be on these specs. So, yeah. Probably not having it every week. Yeah, but overall, I think David's team is good. I think he's got a really good wisher for this team. And again, this is one of those cases where double water works perfectly fine on this team, where they have, you know, when one has a neutral to grass and electric, we could still check those, but it gives him, like, a proper, like, you know, and then with Vaporeon, it gives him a proper, like, freeze-dry switch and resist one as well, because it's usually relatively a three-shot with most freeze-dry offensive mons that can, you know, take down Umbreon. I mean, Vaporeon, stuff like that. So, overall, though, and also I do think that, like, Spore option with Amoongus on this team, I personally think a better Grass or Poison type would have fit better for this team, personally yeah. speaking, because he doesn't have anything that really takes advantage of the regen as well. I think there was, like, a mini regen core. I think then it fits well with this, but overall, just a little bit of lag lagging right here with that, but I think overall David seems decently solid and it's proved its way up to number four. I also do think one one thing I will say is that it might struggle a bit to break certain bulky waters. Oh, 100%. Like, like there's no, there's like no electric type. And also, it's another thing where we kind of critique teams with not having the proper typings that I think are in red scenario. Like with David Seam, yeah. where the heck is this electric type? There is no electric switch in besides Gliscor. And even if Gliscor is your electric switch in, electric types get good coverage. Like, what are you going to stop a freaking, like, Rotom Wash? Nothing, really. Yeah, and it's like, Amoongus is not going to be hitting that hard. It's an Amoongus. Yeah. It's, it's there to be a fat. 
But now get into our top two teams, and we both agreed that these two were basically the best of the best. And it's no surprise that one of the best of the best, but is our number two ranked coach for both of us, is our last season's champion, Latios here, Oren here. And Oren had the choice of getting either a free pick in getting pick number one or franchising him on, which means he automatically gets that mon and he gets to have the joys of finishing out his draft first. So he gets the more relaxation time. But uh, which he did choose in Primal Kyogre, which I'm a little surprised he actually kept Primal Kyogre. I thought he would have went for something else possibly. But me personally, I'm more surprised he didn't choose Car over here, the Carco, his signature mon. Well, to be fair, he can get that whenever. But anyways, to find the point, looking at his team, it's it's just stupid. Like, why why do we allow him to get certain things? He this man has Deoxys attack, which thanks to our homeboy Chili proved why it's good. And then he redrafted Porygon two, which he picked up and only brought to one game. I'm pretty sure, and did nothing in that one game. Just alone, the Weavile, big, like Mega Blaziken, and Deoxys goes nuts. Like, there is no switch into that. Like, at all. Yeah, like, I think overall the offense that Oren here has is really good. I think his defense in from Queen to Corby into Boreon 2 is really good. I think the fact that there's teleport support, really good momentum with U turning and stuff like that. I do think he should have gone again. One of those things is electric type for good voltage pivoting as well. But overall, a lot of his team was just really good. I think the main things we kind of picked on with his team was the fact that this team was a little reliant on Corviknight to be the defogger and the sole defogger for this team because rocks and spikes really are going to be a problem for this team, even sticky webs to a degree. Like, I mean, like, there's also a Karkle, but, like... It's a Karkle. Karkle, it's a, yeah, it's a Karkle. It's not coming every game, and Rock's take it right into that bad boy. Hey, um, Oren, if you want to prove a point about Karkle, I dare you to bring it every single week. You've been yeah, called on notice on do. recording. But oh, anyways, yeah, like, Oren, I really think it seems really good overall. I think that it's going to be one of those, like... God, how do I prep for this guy's team and all that? He's just so good. So what do you do against him? So yeah, I, I said, like, so I said, good offense, good defense. Only real issue I have here is like the removal, and that's really about it, honestly. Like, it's just a good team. Yep, and. To finish off this season, our number one coach, who is a newcomer to the season, is Chickadee. And my God, when you look at a team that screams terror, screams bulk, and just screams, what do I do? This, How do you deal with this team? Look at this man's fairy and steel type. And tell me how you switch into those two. Look at his bulk between Swampert, Mandibuzz, and Mega Venu. It is gross. Like, the only thing we nitpicked about this team, really, I do think it's one of those teams that's missing a, is missing typing. I think there's no dragon on this team, which I think the proper dragon would have made this team more scarier. I do think that... The hazard removal is a little reliant a little bit on Mandibuzz. It can be with Torrent with Thundee if need be. But Thundee is like a last dip option. And I also think the hazard setting. It's pretty much realistically just Swampert. Unless you really want to try to get spikes up with Colossal. But other, other than, than that, that's this is like basically perfect, I think. The, oh, this the, the, team has the perfect yeah. counter of defense with its team, and it just screams the perfect offense. Like, Mewtwo, Xerneas, what else special mons do you need to have just click a button with? 
to follow up with some of your best physical mons, being an Urshifu, which just clicks Wicked Blow as someone that used it last season, and Melmel, Mel, which just clicks Double Iron Bash every single week. And even then, it's like Xerneas, it has 130 in both attack and special attack. So you don't even have to run special every week. Like, you can do, like, mixed or, like, physical. Also, we do like want to certain. clarify that that is not Geomancy Zern. Trust me, people, we're not stupid. We know the threat that could be. Yeah. That, but if we allow that... It if will, we allow that, everyone can yell at Haunch for that. Yeah, we can We can all say that Haunch will be the answer to the killer. Yeah. But, yeah, basically, guys, that is going to wrap it up. If it's a long video, we do apologize. But hopefully, everyone of the coaches hopefully gets to check this video out. And we do also apologize to you coaches that really wanted to see power rankings super early. But you have to understand, you know, Hans and the rest of us, we got real lives. Drew's a nerd, and he's in school still. Uh, yeah, I, we all got stuff to do. I, Hans has been working. I have been working. Yeah, he's been working, trying not to smell so bad. Real. He's still not oh, successful yeah. to this day. Trust me, we smelled him. Yeah, yeah. We we all know how smelly Haunch is, so... But, um, overall, I do think everyone's team is really good. We, now again, if, I want to stress this again. We pointed out flaws that maybe upset you about your team or felt like your team did not deserve a ranking. Like I said, prove us wrong. Prove us why this team you have is great. But if you did like what we heard and you're going to take into consideration and maybe make transactions that benefit your team, you go ahead and do that. But you don't have to ask us if it makes your team better. We're not going to tell you what's going to make your team better. Just take what you want with a grain of salt and go with it. But again, if you personally want to know if we can help you make your team better, we more than likely will help you because we are down to help anyone, especially if yeah. anyone is a new draft league player. Or if anyone wants proper advice, then maybe what can be paired with your team. But yeah. just again, rankings are just made to be ranked. And I'm going to say this because everyone complained about them last season. If you're going to do nothing but complain about your ranking, then don't ask for rankings. Because yeah. these are just opinions. And we gave you them, and then everyone complained about them last year. So I'm asking you guys very nicely... Just don't take these super serious. It's literally just between like two to three people talking and call and then just ranking these teams. Yeah. So I just wanted to preface that because that was the thing I noticed last season. That's what Haunch brought up with us around last season as well when he talked about it. So again, do not take offense to this. Just remember, it's just an opinion. If you want to listen to it, go ahead. If you don't want to, want to just prove us why this seems better than everyone else then go ahead and prove it in your gameplay but overall drew and i are going to head out we both are tired as heck and probably want to sleep but overall midnight. thank you guys so much for watching thank you for showing your love and support for moon guys and to all the moon guys coaches if we get season three you all better make us best stiff again i'm telling you right now That's as a mod i will have the power to drop the hammer we will go after you Specifically, Drew will make you sure that you could out. snipe him on Smeargle. He'll force you to pick it in front of him. Yeah, we will make sure. You he will make sure he goes through the horror again just to make sure we're yeah, best in. Be okay? But anyways, thank you all again so much for watching. Thank you to my main man, Drew, for joining me for these power rankings. And, uh, thank you for recording here. Yep, and so with that being said, thank you all again for watching. Show your support. For the NBA. And with that being said, guys, we are going to go ahead and get out of this video. But until next time, guys, I am Frill Shocker, the nice Tajok, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.